The Ford Fiesta has been quite the sales success in other parts of the world. Now, of course, in the United States, where we tend to shun out small cars, it hasn't been exactly the sales record breaker that Ford was hoping. It still competes in the Ford Super segment. Now, this particular one that I'm showing you is the 2014 Fiesta Titanium. You guys uh, can actually find a 2014 Fiesta SE hatchback that I uploaded a couple weeks ago. But I like to show you guys the different trim levels. So let's take a look at the highest trim. Before, I didn't have a Titanium, but the Titanium is the top of the line model. You can distinguish it as a titanium uh, from several different elements. There is a titanium badge that you'll find on the rear deck. You'll find those special 16 inch alloy wheels. And then of course the Fiesta still comes as a hatchback and a sedan. Now for 2014 Ford did update the car. They updated the front and rear styling, the wheels, the interior. Uh, there are two different powertrains available. Um, now, this particular one that I'm showing you is actually called Storm Gray Metallic. It's actually a new color for 2014. It kind of looks like the Sterling Gray Metallic, but it replaces the slightly odd uh, Violet Gray, which um, a lot of people picked, but this color combination definitely looks better on the Fiesta for me. You can see at the front, it's got the Baby Fusion look. It's got the Aston Martin-like grill. You have these um, angular headlights. And then, of course, this Titanium has the new fog light option. Uh, before, you could get like an LED running lights when you turn on the headlights, but Ford actually got rid of that. Now that you get the functional fog lights. Now, the titanium also gives you the integrated turn signal mirrors. Basically, this one's just missing the sunroof option, as you do get premium features in a Fiesta available, like navigation, leather seats, push-button start, and a backup camera. Those features were typically unavailable on Ford's smallest offering. Now, push-button start and smart access is standard on the titanium, so keep this key fob uh, in your pocket or your purse. And basically, to lock the doors, just come here and touch this button. That locks the door for you. To unlock it, you actually have to touch the button again, and that unlocks the doors for you. Now, looking at the interior, you can see this one does have a nice um, beige or light stone color with the black. It looks actually pretty nice, and um, you can also see this one has the leather seats. Now, stepping inside the vehicle, you do have a updated instrument panel, and then of course you can see there's the push button start. And my particular one has a five-speed manual, a very rare and nice combination to get a top trim with a manual transmission. Ford has been doing that lately because a lot of customers have been asking for it. But basically, just keep that key fob in here, push the clutch in, and push the button to start the engine. And then of course you're still hearing the same 1.6 liter carryover uh, four-cylinder engine. The one liter EcoBoost is not available yet and the Fiesta ST is going to be out soon. Now, shutting the door, the window is automatic up down for the driver only. All the other windows are manual windows. Um, kind of expected that. This is a subcompact car still, but Ford nicely tries to dress it up and make it look more upscale. You can see that SE model that I showed you didn't have the My4 Touch. This obviously has it. You can get this on the SE if you want. And this is actually a different My4 Touch system. I'm sure you guys are noticing the screen is pretty small. This is actually six and a half inches. The All the other Ford vehicles have an eight inch screen. You still have the four quadrants, phone, navigation, and um, radio or entertainment. However, there's something that you may notice down here in this little blue part. That's usually climate. Um, Ford actually just made that settings. Uh, for some reason, they said that you cannot, they couldn't uh, jam climate in there, especially when you put the the screen for climate in here and this little tiny screen, it kind of just made all the buttons really small. So Ford just chose to make that a settings button. Instead, you have hard buttons here for climate. The Fiesta is the only vehicle that does that. Every other Ford vehicle with My4 Touch has it. Now, in terms of its response, um, the My4 Touch system, this is the newest system. Of course, I read that Ford is actually planning another update to make the system even faster. I mean, honestly, this generation's not bad. It transitions between screens uh, decently well. You can go back to entertainment here. And you can see here, um, this basically, the buttons are a little bit smaller, so those of you who have really big fingers probably uh, will have to get used to this and take your eyes off a road to actually get to it now. This has the Sony audio system. And it actually, it sounds fantastic. This is probably the best sounding audio system that I've heard in the subcompact class. So for those of you who are audiophiles, big ones, the Fiesta is definitely has your name written all over it. Now, in terms of the navigation system, I'm really glad to see that here. Before, you could not get navigation on a Fiesta. Basically, you only had to use the sync with turn-by-turn -turn, uh, navigation or voice guidance. So now you can get a full navigation system in a Fiesta. It's basically just the same unit that you'll find in other vehicles. Ford's navigation system has really good renderings, really good uh, street names 
use. It's a very good system with really good voice commands. Now, looking at the center stack here, you do not have the touch sensitive buttons, thank God. Um, you just have conventional buttons, you have your tune, you have your volume controls, your sound controls, um, a little teeny weeny hazard light. And then of course you still get automatic climate control. This is a single zone automatic climate control. You typically don't find that in the compact or subcompact class, Ford gives it to you. Um, you also get heated seats, single level heated seats, and then this button works the ambient lighting in the cabin. This, this car's interior just looks really cool at night. Now looking at the center, or the instrument panel, basically I told you guys before, the gauges are updated blue. You have a nice um, leather wrapped wheel with some nice bolstering extension, steering wheel audio controls. The door panels are basically hard touch, but it's actually leather stitched right here where your elbows are gonna rest. And then of course, the dashboard is still the same soft touch materials from uh, the SE model. All the Fiestas have a similar um, dashboard. And then of course the glove box kind of cheaply falls, but it's a pretty big size. Now, in terms of the shifter, first of all, you finally get a backup camera on the Fiesta. You get no uh, dis or trajectory markings, but you do get distance markings, so it's nice to see that here. Um, the five-speed manual kind of has somewhat longer throws, but um, the feel is okay. It is down a gear compared to the competition, but um, it's nice that, f that you can get a really pretty good five-speed that wakes this car up uh, significantly. Looking down here, you have a power outlet, cup holders, and then, of course, in the center console, which is rare, you don't find this in this class usually, you have um, USB, your SD card for the navigation and your auxiliary port. The lid over here is slightly padded, but I kind of wish it was leather stitched. Incredibly, I'm really impressed with the interior of this Fiesta. It's va it's basically very focus-like, it's gotten very nice, um, but unfortunately the price does show. This one does get pretty expensive loaded like this. Now looking at the back seat, this is where the Fiesta again is still on the smaller side for the class. You're basically gonna look at about 31 cubic feet of legroom back here, which is pretty tight or I'm sorry, it's actually inches of legroom, but um, honestly, even though the numbers say it's pretty tight, I'm five foot seven, I have pretty good room. There's surprisingly really good foot space under there. Don't expect to find any vents. Uh, there is a power outlet, there's one map pocket. And then of course the seats, they're 60-40 split um, with a adjustable headrest, but there's no armrest right here. And then of course, when you're looking at the door panels, uh, they're basically the same hard touch plastic from the fronts, although luckily this is padded right here. This little teeny weeny portion is wrapped in leather, so it's nice that they included that on the titanium. Now, the trunk capacity of the Fiesta also trails the class. This is probably one of the smallest in terms of space. You're only gonna look at about 13 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold them down, which they do not even fold completely flat, and you're gonna get about 25 cubic feet of space. That's roughly half the space of a Nissan Versa or even the Nissan Note and the Honda Fit. So if you're looking for more cargo versatility, um, the Fiesta definitely falls behind the class leaders. Of course, this is still better than the sedan, so I still recommend going with the hatchback. titanium you're still looking at the same 1.6 liter double overhead cam four cylinder engine it doesn't have direct injection the numbers are still the same from that SE I showed you 120 horsepower and 112 pound-feet of torque the one liter EcoBoost will be available in the fall I'll show you guys that in a separate video when it comes out and then of course I'll show you the ST when that comes out later uh, the difference between that SE this is the five-speed manual as opposed to the six-speed dual clutch power shift automatic Fuel economy, 27 in the city and 38 on the highway. Slightly lower than the six-speed dual clutch, but still really good. Let's take a look at how it all drives together. Now, the subcompact class is basically the type of vehicle where you'll still find a lot of buyers who look for one with a manual transmission. Of course, people still choose the automatic, but um, you do find a decent amount of people who go with the stick. And I gotta tell you, with the five-speed, the Fiesta is just a lot better in terms of its driving dynamics and its acceleration. a little cute little chirp from this little teeny weeny 1.6 and it's a pretty smooth engine this engine is much better from uh, previous small four cylinders from Ford's it really just is surprising this whole car in general is just really surprising going around corners here and then planting your foot will lead a surprising uh, smile on your face the car has relatively peppy acceleration. Now, in terms of its competition, the Honda Fit with a five-speed is definitely still quicker than this car. Even though the Fit is down on horsepower by, by three, it all has to do with the gearing. Ford kind of gears this 
manual transmission, more for fuel economy, and the benefit is that it revs lower on the highway compared to the fit. However, you do notice that when you're accelerating a little bit, um, especially when you're shifting from first to second, the car kind of falls out of its power band ever so slightly just because the second gear is a little bit taller than the Honda fits. Now, when you are cruising down the road, this is where the Fiesta blows the fit out of the water. In fact, it blows most other subcompacts out of the water. You have a really quiet ride. I mean, cruising it along, uh, the ride is just incredibly quiet. There's barely any engine, barely any road noise, no wind noise. The car has a really nice compliant ride. It's still firm, but it's not floaty, like for example, a Toyota Yaris uh, would be like that, or I guess maybe even the old Chevy Aveo was like that. But um, the Fiesta just feels like a big car. It feels like a sophisticated car. It feels like its bigger brother, the Focus. And then of course, when you go around the corners, the steering is electric but it gives you a good amount of feedback and a little bit of confidence. So you basically feel like you can take corners and uh, go faster and the car's not going to lose control or feel like it's gonna get a little twitchy like on some of its competitors. I mean, you can really feel that um, the engine kind of falls out of its power band once I put it into second. But with the stick shift, you're gonna look at about a zero to 60 time of maybe around eight and a half seconds. It's about a half second quicker than the six speed power shift automatic, which is a good time. It's an average time. I mean, um, the Kia Rio, I believe with, this, with the six speed is actually probably the quickest. That, well, that'll do it in under eight seconds. But let's face it, people don't buy economy subcompact cars like this to go racing, of course. Ford is one of the first ones to offer one, and I cannot wait to show you guys that Fiesta ST, which has 197 horsepower from the 1.6, but I can see exactly why cho Ford chose this chassis. The Fiesta just feels incredibly nimble. It feels incredibly solid. Um, it just feels like a much more expensive car than it is, and even though this design it dates back to 2010, um, the car still feels relatively new. And then with these new updates that Ford made, you have the new navigation screen, you have a backup camera, you have all these premium features the Fiesta really does feel like you've bought a car that feels like a class above all those tin can uh, subcompacts that all of uh, all, um, all us Americans know from the past and we all hated them. That's the reason why we don't typically like these small cars. Of course, even though uh, you have the manual, be prepared to do some shifting because if you try to put your foot down when the thing is like in third gear and you just made a turn, it's not gonna go anywhere. So you really need to utilize uh, second gear more often. That's where uh, you'll notice the shorter gearing ratio in like the Honda Fit, for example, the car accelerates better um, even in the higher gears because of that gearing. Again, the manual has really crisp throws. It doesn't actually mind being hurried, and the clutch is very light. This car is really easy to drive. Basically, if you're looking to buy a car that you could teach someone how to drive a stick shift on, the Fiesta will do wonder, wonders for you. It's very easy, it's very light, it's very nimble, it's easy to park. I mean, this car is a great first-time car for anybody looking to get their first car or is just uh, starting out driving. Now, that brings me to the conclusion of this review. Um, I showed you guys the SE, which had a sticker price of around 18,000. This is the titanium, and this one is a little bit more expensive. Actually, it's a pretty good amount uh, more money. This one stickers at about 20,850. The good thing with the titanium is it comes pretty well equipped um, with most features as standard equipment. The only option that this one has is the navigation package, which adds about 795. All in this one's 20,850. If you add the moonroof option, that's the other option, you're gonna push the price up to over 21,000, which is actually, um, probably the most expensive in the class. The Kia Rio gets this much. The Honda Fit is actually at this price range when you get it with navigation. But of course, the Fit's unavailable with like leather seats, a moonroof, push button start, stuff like that. So for those of you who are in the market for a subcompact car like this, I definitely would recommend checking out the 2014 Fiesta as you'll definitely be very impressed with what Ford has to offer with their, their latest models. Of course, those of you looking for a subcompact that offers more space in the back end and, and the trunk, you should probably look at some of the competition as well. Thanks so much for watching guys, I'll catch you all later.